Do you go to the gym often and your goal is to increase muscle mass? Then this video will be super interesting for you. Because we will explain how long you have to rest in between your working set to increase your training effectiveness. Because you see people sometimes resting 60 seconds, but also very long, like four to five minutes. I will do a little test on myself using back squats and using also a nearest device to define the optimal resting period for me and also something that you can take away from this video. Ready for it? Let's go. So before we go into the actual testing, uh, let's look a little bit more in detail what the difference is between short and long rest periods. Obviously, if you have a short rest period, for example, during a metcon or you rest only 30 seconds between your sets, you have a lot of metabolic stress building up, but the weight on the bar can never be that high because you're fatigued from the previous set, all right? So the mechanical tension is pretty low with short sets. But then there's kind of a break point where you have longer rest periods, for example, three to four minutes, you can rest much longer. The mechanical tension will be higher because you can put actually much more weight on the bar, but that also um, indicates that the metabolic stress will be lower with longer rests. The question now obviously is, what is the most important part for hypertrophy, for muscle growth? Is it metabolic stress or mechanical tension? And actually, most of the research has indicated that it is mostly mechanical tension and the volume of mechanical tension that would drive um, muscle growth in the long term. All right. So now uh, let's look a little bit into how energy is produced during uh, exercise and how that also relates to the nurse management I will do later in the experiment. So if we look at energy production during something like a back squat set, four times eight, for example, um, most of the energy, or at least a large part of the energy, is produced via phosphocreatine, the most powerful energy source in your body, all right? And obviously, when you start doing squats, the phosphocreatine stores are depleted very fast. So they go from 100% to 10% or even 5% very quickly. And then they boost up, and around 70% is recovered after 30 seconds. So if you rest 30 seconds, 70% is approximately back recovered, back restored, back uh, resynthesized. And it takes up to three minutes to fully recover. And this is importantly dependent on the oxygen availability. So how much oxygen actually uh, can be uh, delivered to the muscle. Important thing, this is different for, ev for uh, everyone. So some people will need a very short recovery time would say the better CrossFit athletes, for example, they need two minutes or one minute to fully recover. Uh, other people like weightlifters with a lot of type two muscle fibers, so fast twitch fibers, they will actually need three or four or five minutes. That's why they take so much rest in between their sets. What I'm gonna do now in my little experiment, I will do two times, four times eight back squats at 65 to 70% of my one RM. One time I will rest each time 90 seconds, so not fully recovered, my phosphocreatine stores. And one time I will rest three and a half minutes always between my sets and see first how it feels and also how the oxygen delivery and the oxygen consumption is during those sets and also during the recovery. So ready for it? Let's go straight into it. Okay guys, so now I'm gonna go for my second times, four times eight, but not resting 90 seconds, but actually resting uh, three minutes and a half between each set. Let's see how it goes. Okay, the second set was harder than expected. As you know, I did uh, two times, 
four sets of eight back squats uh, with a rest period of around three hours in between. The first time I rested always 90 seconds uh, in between the sets and the second time I rested three and a half minutes and I definitely needed those three and a half minutes because it became hard at the end. Anyway, let's look at some uh, data on the muscle oxygenation. So remember, nurse measures the amount or the, the relative percentage of oxygenated and deoxygenated, so without oxygen, hemoglobin or red blood cells inside a specific tissue, in this case, my uh, thigh muscle, my vastus lateralis. And um, this is the data from the first time, so where I rested only 90 seconds. You can beautifully see, once I start doing the squats, the first three to four reps, oxygenation just, um, muscle oxygenation just drops off of a cliff immediately. And then it kind of fo uh, forms a plateau at around 20 to 30% of, of uh, relative oxygenation. And then when I stop the eight sets, eight reps, it jumps up and actually it overshoots the baseline. The baseline is the beginning around 65%. Why does it overshoot? Because yeah, the heart keeps pumping, the blood is still flowing into the, the tissue, but obviously the tissue is not uh, contracting anymore. Okay, <laughs> So you see this nice uh, increase. And what I did, I actually, um, it was still increasing around 70, 72% creeping up. And then I started again my second set third set and fourth set. So this indicates that my muscle oxygenation was not fully recovered, or at least it was not fully to baseline yet. Okay, so that's a little bit what, what you can uh, take out of this. Then obviously uh, I also did after a good rest period, my uh, second set or second set of four, where uh, I did the same thing. I just rested much longer, three and a half minutes. And again, obviously, I started squatting, drops off a cliff, starts a little bit of plateauing, and then uh, it goes up, uh, it goes up. And interestingly enough, after around 90 seconds, so exactly the, the time I rested before, it starts going down again in the recovery period. That's logical because obviously the heart uh, is not pumping as hard anymore, at least the stroke volume is lower and your uh, muscle oxygenation comes back to baseline. And then I started again, boom, the second set, third set, fourth set and so on. And for me personally, this was around 90 seconds, it started creeping down again. But this will be not for everyone the same, all right? That's important because the muscle typology or the percentage of fast twitch versus slow twitch fibers is for everyone different. And this could actually heavily influence the recovery time you need for uh, such squats. For example, myself, I'm a quite explosive uh, typology. I can jump high, I can squat a lot. So I definitely need a little bit more rest. And you can see this also in the, in the, in the data. It takes a long time before I actually get towards my baseline. If you would do this with an elite CrossFit athlete or even someone who has more type one muscle fibers, you probably wouldn't see such a strong desaturation during the squats, and you definitely also uh, would probably see a quicker recovery time back to baseline. So that's why you can use this device um, to actually auto-regulate your training and to um, use your muscle state for uh, your recovery during such a, a squats. So that means that in a regular CrossFit gym if you, or, or a hybrid training gym, you see everyone has 90 seconds of rest, two minutes of rest. Maybe you can auto-regulate this, that some people need much more rest, for example, like me, and some people need less rest, okay, to maximize the effectiveness of training. Good. I think that was it for today. Much more data to show, but uh, that's for another video. I hope you like this type of content. We definitely uh, like to, to make such, a, such content. Give us a like and a subscribe if you want to see more of these little experiments. Hope to catch you in the next video, and uh, ciao for now. Bye.